Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Um, I did a video recently called the $5,000 challenge. That was on the back of a video I did last year called the $1,000 challenge. And it was all about given a certain amount of money, what snakes would you buy? So I've talked a lot about buying snakes. Today, I'm going to look at making the best of your existing collection. For whatever reason, whether it's budgetary, whether it's location and snakes are not available, many people just don't have the opportunity or the luxury of bringing in a snake to enhance their existing collections. They have to make the best of what they have. Now, with incomplete dominant genes, anybody can breed them together and get instant results. And that's up to you what snakes you pair to what. So I'm gonna to focus today on some of the strategies and things that I've done in my collection because I am actually in a similar predicament. A lot of the more recent genes are not available. So I have had in many cases to make the best of what I have. So I'm gonna talk about strategies uh, primarily for enhancing your recessive projects how I have gone about working my recessive projects, how long it takes, and what you can expect from the results. Some pitfalls to watch out for, some do's and don'ts, and as I say, there is no right and wrong in this hobby. It's up to you how you breed your snakes and progress your projects, but there's certainly some things to think about. This is my way, not necessarily the right way. So we're gonna look at some recessive projects and how I have managed the projects given that I've not been able to buy the snakes that I've wanted to buy to enhance those projects. How have I managed that using just what I have? Okay, so the first project you're going to see is my Spot Nose Clown project, and we started from scratch. You're gonna see three generations of snakes, the parents, where I took a Spot Nose and paired it to a clown to make my own heads. First generation offspring, or the second generation of the project uh, would be a set of female hets that I kept back and I paired them to visual clowns. So we started from scratch, I had to make my own hets and that is tip number one. Make your own hets, do it now. Don't be frightened to start right from the bare bones of a project. Make your own hets, you'll be absolutely certain that they are 100% hets and you'll get the genes in there that you need for your project. Several years ago when I set myself the goal of making a Pompeii, Spot Nose Clown was totally unavailable. The only thing I could get my hands on was this pastel yellow belly Spot Nose male and he is not het for anything. So I grew him up I paired him to the Pastel Vanilla Clown to make my own hets. This girl here, Pastel Vanilla Clown, she throws really high quality offspring. And the Pastel Vanilla Yellow Belly spot nose het for clown female was the result of that pairing so I made my own hets he is the start of the project and he represents the first step five years ago so this girl here is the pastel vanilla yellow belly spot nose het for clown female We produced the spot nose het for clown female from him and from that spot nose het for clown female first generation we produced second generation yellow belly spot nose visual clowns a project five years in the making to get to this stage and we still do not have the Pompeii but we're well on the way Make your own hats, grow them up, breed them back to visuals, and you have the quickest route to success and the satisfaction of having done it 
all yourself. The next phase was once I'd produced my own hets and grown them up, I kept a bunch of females back and I paired them to visuals in order to get the third generation spot nose clowns. Pairing a het to a visual gives you the best chance of getting the most numbers of visuals. So tip number two, where you can pair your hets to visuals, you double the odds of getting visuals in the offspring. last stage that I'll show is the yellow belly spot nose clowns that I produced and this has taken five years but now we're really starting to see the benefits of all that work and we're really starting to get somewhere on this project it's been very satisfying okay so now we're getting somewhere this is F2 or second filial the second generation offspring some five years after we started the project and this is a visual yellow belly spot nose clown. This is getting some way towards the goal that we set ourselves of the Pompeii. Obviously we need to add some more genes to this combination but it's taken us to give you some idea of time making our own hets and starting from scratch five years to get to this point. Now the benefit of those five years is that the other genes that we need in the project black pastel and red stripe we've also made plans to get those into the project by making additional het for clowns with those genes in them during the time it's taken us to reach this point so the project will actually accelerate from this point onwards and I can promise you once these snakes reach maturity we will see some outstanding combinations produced by the time we get to F3 or the third generation offspring. So this is where it really starts to get exciting. So this is yellow belly spot nose clown. This one also has vanilla. It's a male and you can see that it is growing up incredibly quickly. Uh, your best pullbacks you do tend to feed them a little bit extra and they grow incredibly fast. So there we go the fruits of five years worth of labor and we're still not there but we've had an incredibly satisfying project and produced some awesome snakes along the way we did actually produce three of these here is the second one slightly darker but a similar size and here is the third one slightly smaller but the brightest of the lot this one came from the dumbbell egg so this is the female and these are two males why do I keep two males? Well, I'm actually not going to be keeping two males. Uh, I'll give you one guess as to where one of these males is going to end up. But there you go. Those are the three yellow belly spot nose clowns that we made this year. The next project we're going to look at is a double recessive project. And again, I'm assuming that we're going to have to start with hets. So this is a dreamsicle. Uh, we've got hets for pied and we've got hets for lavender. My tip here is to make your visuals first on both sides of the recessive project. Don't be tempted to pair your het pied to a het lavender because you'll end up with a bunch of pos hets and a bunch of snakes that are not het at all. You won't be able to tell the difference. Manage the project so that you increase the certainty and reduce the number of holdbacks that you need to keep. So in this case, I took het lavenders and made visual lavenders. I took het pides and I made visual pides. My dreamsicle pro project. This girl here is pastel het for lavender. And yes, I did have to start with hets and make my own visuals. 
So she was actually paired to another Het Lavender, a Firefly Het Lavender male, and she did produce a couple of visual lavenders. Note that in order to get to the Dreamsicle, I'm producing visual lavenders from Hets and I'm producing visual pides from Hets. So this is the lavender side, and I did not pair this girl straight to a Het pie. That would have been increasing the odds to far too great a, a long shot. Make your visuals first. So I've made the visual lavenders from this girl in a head to head pairing. Let's have a look at the visual lavenders, which is half of the equation towards dreamsicles. So this girl here, visual lavender from that head for lavender female. So I've made my visual lavenders. This girl can now be paired up to a visual pied and I'm guaranteed of getting 100% double het dreamsicles. If I'd gone the other route and paired the het lavender to a het pied, I'd be producing a ton of offspring that were het for who knows what. Some of them would be het for pied, some of them would be het for lavender, some of them would be double het, some of them wouldn't be het for anything. Choosing this route and producing the visuals first from each of your recessive hets guarantees that when you pair them up you are going to get 100% double het much better way of controlling the project much better way of increasing your probabilities and a much better way of, of controlling the number of holdbacks that you need to keep in your racks going the other route you wouldn't have a clue which of the babies were het for what and you'd have to keep them all. This way I can pick the best because I know they're all going to be 100% double het dreamsicles. So this is a visual lavender from that het for lavender. This is second generation. This is a female and I got two. Here's the other one, a little smaller, a little brighter. This is a pastel version of the same thing, pastel lavender. Again, a female, so I'll grow her up and pair her to a visual pied male. Again, guaranteeing 100% double het dreamsicles. It appears to take two years longer, but in actual fact, it isn't. If you go the het pied to het lavender route, you will end up with a bunch of snakes and will not know what to pair to what, and it will end up taking you even longer. This is the quickest way to success, and it's the best way to manage your double recessive project. So we got two visual lavenders from that het for lavender female. Make your visuals first. Pastel het for pied female, the other half of the Dreamsicle project, and pieds are a lot more common than lavenders. Um, but I started with these hets. I do have visual pieds, of course, in my collection now, but some of you may not have that option, but don't despair. Use your hets, and I've used this girl to produce visual pieds. So if I had to go that route again, this is the pied side of the dreamsicle equation. I have a het pied and I made my visual pieds first. That guarantees that when I pair a visual pied to a visual lavender, I'm going to get 100% double het dreamsicles. Much easier way to manage your project. So don't despair if you have to start with hets because you can't get the visuals or that's all you have in your collection. This is actually the best and most satisfying way to go about reaching that end goal of a double recessive. So this is het pied female, pastel het pied. I have two of these and they're both produced visual pieds for me last season. In fact, let's have a look at one of those visual pieds now because it's quite a nice one. So this is actually one of her offspring. This is a visual pied male that I produced last season from this female. So there you go. Those are the two components needed for the Dreamsicle project. So this is a male and he will be up to size and ready for those lavender females if that's the route that I choose to take. So these are the ingredients that I've made. So this is second generation. Third generation will be pr to produce my double het Dreamsicles. So that's five years to reach the, the double het stage but it takes an awful lot of guesswork out of the project. So that's the visual pied side of things.
and as you grow and your collection grows you will at some stage want to add a snake make sure it's a game changer would be my next tip we added blackhead to the lavender project not only is it useful in lavender it's also useful in our dreamsicle project and we will use blackhead in both clown and desert ghost so this was a real high value add to the project without spending too much money So this guy here is a Blackhead Enchi Het for Lavender and it's a male. We wanted to add Blackhead particularly to our Lavender project but it will also be useful in the Dreamsicle of course. And because this guy is already Enchi that saves me from making an extra set of Hets. Uh, we can pair this guy up to a Lavender and bring Enchi into the Lavender project as well as Blackhead. So Blackhead Enchi Het for Lavender and this really is a game changer to both the Lavender and the Dreamsicle project. The addition of Blackhead will make a significant difference to the colour and contrast of our Lavenders and Dreamsicles. So this guy was added to the project and not at particular great expense. It's not a unusual gene, it's not difficult to get hold of. Uh, perhaps the Het for Lavender part is a little bit more difficult but it was available uh, so I took this guy on to enhance the Lavender project and the Dreamsicle project. Okay so this is Pastel Blackhead it's a female so yes I didn't stop at buying just one snake uh, she's also Het for Lavender so she will be going into the Lavender project but these snakes were available locally, they were not expensive, so I bought a pair, not just one. Um, the male would have been sufficient for my project needs, but this is a new project that I wanted to get into. As I said, Blackhead we're going to use in some of our other projects, and I also want to have a look at Blackhead in its own right. So I got a male and a female, and this is the female, Pastel Blackhead Het for Lavender. The intention is to get these into lavender, but Blackhead we're also going to use in its own right, and we're going to use it in our Clown and Desert Ghost projects as well. And so the female growing up at this stage is also a useful addition to the collection. So yes, I did add a pair when I really only needed to add the male. The next project we're going to look at is a double recessive project and this time I've already made my own hets. We have a bunch of 100% double het Desert Ghost Clowns. The issue now becomes what do we do? Do we pair double het to double het which is actually a 1 in 16 chance at the double visual and also produces 66% possible hets in the offspring or do we grow those females up and actually take the plunge and purchase a male that is a visual for one and heck for the other and hence double the odds of getting the double recessive by adding a visual that is a known het to the project. And then of course we move on to the Desert Ghost Clown project and I've already produced my double hets. Um, we paired a visual Desert Ghost to a visual clown to produce these double hets. They are 100% double hets. I have nine females and four males. Obviously these are going to be split uh, between myself and ARP Constrictors. We're working the project jointly so he will take a bunch of females and two of the males. But we have a decision to make in terms of managing the project. Het to het is one in four to produce a visual. These are double hets so even though they are guaranteed 100% double het Desert Ghost Clown to get the double visual is a one in 16 shot. It's one in four times one in four. So we're either going to have to pair double het to double het and do a bunch of them in order to get a very limited number of double recessives 
from all of those offspring or as these females get to size we can look at a different strategy. Maybe with nine females to work with it would pay to bring in a powerhouse male, maybe a visual desert ghost who is het for clown. So when we pair to the females we know that not only do we halve the odds of getting desert ghost in the offspring, it's a 50-50 shot with a visual to a het, but all the offspring that are not desert ghost are guaranteed to be 100% het for desert ghost rather than 66% het. Now het clown to het clown is one in four, but we've halved our odds of getting the double visual and we're controlling the outcome with a little bit more certainty. So again, as these females grow up, we look at the strategy we want to employ. We might try het to het because we have a bunch of females, but we also may bring in a male who is a visual desert ghost het for clown in order to increase the probability of the double visual and more importantly control the outcome of the offspring from these pairings. So this is my double het desert ghost clown project and I have produced a bunch of double hets myself. They're sitting in my racks growing up and I have the absolute certainty of knowing that they are guaranteed 100% double het desert ghost clown. And this boy here is actually a pastel leopard double head and he looks just like an Azanthic. He's gone black and white. I don't know why he's gone black and white. I've shown him before but he's growing up nicely. So pastel leopard double head desert ghost clown and I have a bunch of these in my racks. So this is another snake in that double recessive desert ghost clown project. This is from the second clutch that I produced this year. This is a female and the second clutch contains vanilla. So this is pastel vanilla leopard double head desert ghost clown. This one's a female. She has some growing to do before she will be being bred. But what an incredibly nice coloured bright snake to use in a project such as this. I can't wait to produce either the desert ghost or the clown or the Desert Ghost Clown version of this snake. This is just an awesome looking snake, even in its double het form. The final example is our Exanthic Clown, and this is exactly the point that I was making with pairing double het to double het. This project, we'd already created a bunch of double hets. They were 100% double het for Exanthic and for Clown. But when we paired them together, we kept missing the double visual. So we ended up with a bunch of offspring that were visual for one recessive or the other, but only possible het for the second recessive. And we had to pair those back in subsequent generations in order to prove them out. But we have actually this last season proved out a male and a female that is a visual for one and 100% het for the other. So when we pair those together this season we give ourselves the best chance of producing that double visual recessive. And I include this so that we can learn lessons when we apply this to our Desert Ghost Clown projects and what we do with those double hets. This project is an example of how long it can actually take to realize the double visual even after you've produced your 100% double het recessives. There's no guarantee when you pair het to het that you're going to hit the double visual or that you will know what the offspring are that you produce. And that can be very difficult to manage in a project. You simply have to push through, prove out which of the possible hets are actually hets and carry on it can take quite some time. So my next tip in multiple recessives is when you do add snakes to your collection in multi-recessive projects, if you decide to go the route where you're going to buy a powerhouse male, make sure that you buy it from a reputable dealer or from another hobby breeder that you can trust. If possible, swap your hets between projects and help each other out 
because breeding the hex yourself means that you know their hex. When you buy them in, there's always a doubt. The last thing you want in a multi-recessive project is for your hex not to prove out. These snakes are far too valuable and the projects have far too greater odds against getting the multi-recessive to run the risk of your hex turning out to be not het after all. Okay, let's take a look at another double recessive project that I'm working, and that's the Exanthic Clown. And you'll see that this is a visual Exanthic, but it's not a clown. This project had reached the stage where we'd already made our double hets. Uh, we had 100% het Exanthic, 100% het Clown. And we were forced to pair het to het. And if you pair het to het, any of the non-visuals are only 66% pos hets, and you can't tell which is which. So I picked up this guy, he's a male, and he is obviously visual exanthic, so that side of the equation is taken care of, but this guy was only 66% pos het clown, he needed to be proved out. And we kept two. This guy was paired to two possible double het exanthic clowns, and neither of those females proved out to be double het, uh, but one of them did prove out to be het for clown. She produced these gorgeous little babies using this male. And because these are visual clowns, this guy is now 100% het for clown. He is a visual exanthic het for clown. And that increases his value in this project tremendously. Now that we know this guy is for sure exanthic het clown, we have females which are for sure visual clown het exanthics. So at some time in the future when we mix and match, this is the best combination you could get in your double recessive project. He is het for clown and she is a visual clown, which means that there is a 50-50 chance that their offspring will be visual clowns and any that are not visual clowns will be 100% het for clown. She is het for exanthic and he is a visual exanthic which means again 50-50 chance of a visual exanthic and any of the non-visual exanthics are guaranteed to be 100% het exanthic. So a 50-50 chance of getting clown, a 50-50 chance of getting exanthic, that is a 25% chance of the double visual and because we were pairing het to het, it's actually taken several years of not hitting the double visual and producing a load of 66% pos het offspring. It's taken three to four years to get this project back on track to the state that we're at now, where we have visuals for one, which are proven het for the other. And this year, this guy is going to go to a mature female not related to this one, but which is also visual clown, 100% het, exanthic, giving us the best shot at a double visual. If we had purchased this male four years ago to go with our double het females, we would have saved ourselves four years. So although a male like this would be expensive as a strategy for producing your double recessives, this is definitely worth considering if you have the money to be able to do it. In your double recessive, triple recessive, quad recessive projects, have a look at what you could possibly afford to buy in terms of a male that's carrying visuals for at least some of those recessives. You can see that when we pair these snakes together, we have a one in four shot at our double recessive, so it's more than likely that we will succeed this year far preferable outcome to foundering around for four years, pairing het to het, het to pos het, pos het to pos het, and not having a clue what the offspring are that you produce. Some of them are, some of them are not, het for the various recessives. 
So there you go, that's an example of what can happen. It's taken us four years to get this project back on track and to actually produce visuals which are known het for the other recessive. Okay guys, so that's it for today. Making the best of snakes you have in your existing collection will ring a bell with many collectors. Um, maybe they have space problems, maybe it's budgetary constraints, or maybe it's location that doesn't allow them to buy the snakes they want to buy. What would you do to make the best of your existing collection? So I hope you enjoyed that. A look at some strategies and do's and don'ts from my perspective, uh, given some of the constraints that I have had to work with. So jump down in the comments below if you would like to ask any questions or you want me to cover some additional subjects. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.